So the last time I lived with someone was, um, he lived in Manhattan. I moved into his studio apartment. The last person he had lived with before me was his ex-wife. The only thing hanging on his wall was like a painting that she I did. I spent a lot of that relationship focused on trying to redo that space so that I could feel like it was our home and, and that, that I had, you know, a place in it. And no matter what I did, it never felt that way. And I realized it was because I, I wasn't fully at home with him or, or myself. Um, but now with Tony, um, you know, I have moved into his studio apartment in DC and there's definitely like, you know, doubts coming up of like, am I, is this one of those things where I just had to like repeat it and like don't have to go through it again? Um, or is it like, you know, a chance to do things differently? You know, Tony's a different person than Steven. I'm a different person than I was back then. While I was with Steven, I uh, woke up one day um, and couldn't get out of bed because of like crippling back pain. I had never had any kind of back pain before. It was totally um, unexpected. And it started this whole healing journey. Um, saw like osteopaths, chiropractors, surgeons. I had like a ruptured or a seriously herniated disc in my lower back. And um, they said that that I should get surgery. Like even chiropractors that you know felt confident that they could help me when, when they saw me, once they saw the x-rays, apparently like they, I shouldn't even be walking, like it was that severe. So, but I was like, well, I am walking and I don't, I, surgery didn't feel right to me. I would have been open to it if I felt like it would have improved things, but I just, it didn't feel right. And I felt like there was a deeper reason that this was happening um, beyond the physical. I asked my that part of my body that was in such pain like what are you wanting me to know like what have i not been paying attention to so i drew a picture of yeah this is the area my back and um this is an image of yoko ono in this piece i forgot the name it's pretty savage like she lets people she gives people a pair of scissors and lets them cut up this fabric that was around her Han is to bind. It's a Korean word that means like a like a grudge or a curse, something that needs a knot, something that needs to be undone. So I was talking about needing to unravel that. This is all also about the connection between the throat and the womb. So I wrote things that I hadn't been saying to my partner. Fuck you. So you're not willing to be your best friend not for yourself and not for me. You're not inspired by our love. You scared a thing and you talk to me so coldly. When you ask me to show up differently, I'm happy to, even if I'm not sure if it's the right thing for me, even if it's not as easy as just being the me that I know myself to be. I'm willing to try. The ways I betrayed myself um, sexually like when i said yes when my body was saying no i want to be cherished and be told loving things and appreciated and i and i realized you know i got that clear advice and i didn't do that and as in one of the um exercises we for this class we're um like gazing at her vagina and you know she suggests to to just continually say, I love you, I love you, as you're looking at your vagina. And I'm like, yeah, I think that's what this, my body, my whole body wanted. And um, I never, I don't think I ever did it really before. Um, you know, I, I try to tell myself, you know, I love you sometimes, but not like directly to my body. And so, but yeah, that's looking back on it now, I found it in my parents' basement and it literally like it gave a prescription. It's safe to be happy. I can trust myself. I am always being guided. There's nothing wrong. Love myself and all problems are resolved. Use sex to heal the deepest wounds of sex. Use racial stereotypes to stand out and then teach that we're all one.
just as I am the role of earth, helping you, filling you up so you remember you need do nothing to deserve to be loved. Oh, so this is interesting. The morning glory story. I don't actually even know what that meant at the time, but a couple years later, I did this um, collage, The Rebirth of the Golden Queen, and here it says, you can confiscate money in hand. Can you confiscate the body's glory? Or peel every, away every strip you wear, but can you peel the nothing, the nakedness that covers and veils to the shameless girl wearing the white jasmine lord's light of morning? Where's the need for cover and jewel? My back is fine. It, it only hurts a lot now if I'm overdoing it. Um, but I still have like numbness on my um, left upper thigh. It's because I think that it's hitting that nerve. Um, and I've also noticed the balance on my left foot is like much, it's like weaker, like around the big toe area. So I've always had like wide feet. And so I didn't notice when um, I started to have bunions, which is like a growth that happens like at the joint under your left, your big toe. And it can be like hereditary or caused by wearing tight shoes. Um, but it didn't hurt me. I actually only noticed because when I tried on shoes, like they weren't fitting. Um, and, but the last year it started to actually hurt where I would like, after standing and uh, working at the cafe, I would like, you know, go for a walk outside and it would actually ache. Um, so I've been trying to stretch it and, and do things like that. And then I was talking to Tony about it and he he doesn't have bunions, but he has pain in the same place, his left foot um, around the big toe. And so then I was curious about what our bodies might be telling us, because he said that um, he's had it from a soccer injury um, many years ago, but um, lately it's been hurting more. Um, so when I communicated intuitively with that part of my body, um, it was about not like being ashamed of where I am now. Um, not being fully, like not being able to step forward because I'm not accepting where I am now. So this is a collage I did of my foot, um, my left foot. So here is an image of um, a woman floating above a cinder block. So this, I interpret it as there's a part of me that just wants to float away and be free of the weight of the world. And this image, which is where it actually hurts, where the, you know, the bunion is, this image is of a, of a child um, petting a baby elephant. And this image is of a woman kind of pulling herself up. And this was about, you know, holding myself, helping myself to feel safe here, comforting myself uh, when I feel like I want to go away. And then this image was of a woman kind of in the woods. And at first I just interpreted that as, you know, feeling connected to nature, um, helping me to ground. But then uh, I, I pulled a Oracle card the next day that was saying it was time to come out of the trees, like come out of the forest, 